but multi-platform approach to building sustainable audiences. And please welcome our presenter, Emmanuel Zunz, CEO of 1RPM. Thank you. I think we don't need the, uh, we don't need that. Um, so, well, thanks for coming out, guys. It's, uh, it's great to be here. Um, just got a curios out of curiosity, like who who does what out of the uh, out of the audience? I think I got four people, so it'd be pretty easy to figure out who does what. Can you guys let me know so I'm, maybe I can kind of cater my presentation <coughs> towards your interests? Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Yep. You just told me. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yourself also same. Okay, gotcha. Okay, great. Well, um, we, uh, my company is a, is a, started off as a distribution company uh, and still is a distribution company, but over time we've evolved and have been adding more and more marketing type services and, and, uh, and this is kind of based on what we're working on and some of our own experiences and happy to share what we think works and if you guys have, you know, since it's a small crowd today, you're more than welcome to jump in, ask questions. Um, uh, I think it's kind of, we can kind of play it loose here um, a loose format. So, but I'll just get started. Um, you know, what I've noticed, and I think probably everyone here, is that uh, platforms have become more and more social. Uh, Spotify, Apple, uh, YouTube. Uh, well, YouTube's always been somewhat of a social platform. Started off as a social platform, uh, social networking site for videos. Uh, and, uh, and social media is becoming more monetizable. Pretty soon we're going to see an entrance uh, of, of Facebook's going to Facebook's gonna enter the, uh, the licensing uh, world and is going to start you know, monetizing content soon and, and I think that's a welcome addition. So we're really seeing convergence between the traditional you know, platforms of selling music where we, you know, we came from the iTunes store and now it's evolved into Apple Music and there's Apple Connect and there's all these social components. Uh, and even more so, I think yesterday there was a new article that came out that you know, Apple's adding a lot even more social components. Uh, so I really think that you know, that impacts the way we should be releasing music. I mean, there's this convergence. Uh, and what does that mean is that if for years you were working on Facebook to grow your audience so you could sell downloads, now you're really focusing on fan engagement to promote your content. And that content can be, uh, 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 it can be official music videos or it can be non-official content. But if you want to stay relevant in, in, the, in the music world or in the entertainment world today, you can't spend you know, two years recording an album and then coming out. You have to stay engaged with your audience and you have to focus on building audiences. And so as a company, as, a, as a, a company that you know succeeds when our artists succeed because we, we do revenue share models, we want to enable them, to, we want to help them become successful by following best practices. And so we're looking at, well, this is the way you should be doing things today. You should be focusing on releasing content more regularly. Um, and uh, you should be doing it consistent, so consistently and regularly and having kind of a specialized approach for each platforms and for each of the platforms that you're working with. Moreover, you should be also connecting the dots and having kind of uh, understanding how YouTube and Spotify are correlated with each other or how socials correlate with your Spotify or your Apple. Uh, we're always trying to connect the dots and more, right? So, um, so here are some of the tactics that I'm going to briefly go through uh, of what we think works. And some of them are, are pretty obvious, but it's important that uh, you do all of them. And so we'll go through profile verifications social media integration and coordination of your release strategy, uh, network cross-promotion, which I'll explain, collaborations, feature placements is another obvious one, email marketing, YouTube optimization, advertising, playlisting strategy, using smart URLs, and growing your business worldwide, territorial expansion. So this is something that you know, so many people don't do, but it's just an obvious start. I mean, claim your profile on Spotify. Make sure you have a verified Facebook or verified Instagram. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, um, you know you can work with a company like ours. You can go do it yourself. But this is, you know, kind of the first step. And so often we'll find, you know, pretty big artists that haven't even done the very basic. And the advantage of it is that, you know, for example, if if you if you verify your your Spotify profile, um, whenever you uh, update something in your profile or you put up a new re release, all those fans that are following you will get a notification. So you're automatically getting kind of a marketing uh, you know, push with that. So uh, it obviously helps in terms of algorithms and you're not only just uh, authenticating your official profile, you're telling people this is the official profile, you need that, but it's also gonna give you that kind of algorithmic benefit. 
Um, this is an obvious one, but I, if, you know, again, uh, when you're putting out music, uh, plan ahead and try to get featured, whether it work with your distributor or work with your label or, or whatnot to get that featured placement. That's obviously going to you know, help you grow your audience. It's kind of a simple one. Um, now playlisting. There's people are always, you know, there's this vast world of playlists. It's kind of this, people are always wanting to get on playlists and get featured. And we hear this all the time. How can we get featured on playlists? How can we get this? How can we do that? Um, and I think it, it is a challenge, you know, because there's so much content and there are so few, well, there's thousands and tens of thousands of playlists, but there are so few playlists today that matter or the only ones that matter in a lot of people's eyes are the editorial playlists. But what we're saying is, yes, you want to get on those editorial playlists. You want to get on the Apple curated, you know, uh, best of playlists for Apple or what is it? The what are, what are they called, Margaret? Those playlists on Apple, um, the, you know, the A list, the A list on Apple. Or you want to get, you know, on uh, rock, you know, rap caviar on Spotify. I mean, you want to get on those kind of editorial playlists because they generate massive audiences. But you also want to pursue your own playlist strategy, in my opinion. So what we have done as a company is we've we've started creating our own playlists curating them and building them over time, and we're actually having a lot of success uh, with that. So uh, I think our top playlist right now is about 170,000 subscribers, um, but we're putting, you know, we're investing in ads every week. We're doing targeted ads on Facebook to drive traffic to our playlist. We're getting our artists to promote our playlist. Uh, we're doing all kinds of things that we can reduce our dependency on editorially curated playlists. And the other thing that artists should do is they should do the same. They should, we as a company are doing that, but artists should be creating their own playlists and should be developing that as, it, as they would be developing their Facebook page to get more likes, they need to be focused on getting more followers, more subscribers for their, for their playlists on Spotify and on Apple. And treat those platforms like they're your social media as well because you'll get a return uh, uh, on that investment. And then finally, there's um, other playlists, user-generated playlists that can be just as important and, or if not more important than some of those editorially curated playlists from the companies themselves. Um, you know, you should feel free to reach out to those people. Create, they're, they're, they're essentially publicists within the platform. They can really promote your content. So uh, I think, you, you know, you need to have a, a holistic playlist strategy so that you're not just relying on the editorially curated playlist. Uh, this is an example uh, of one of our artists that, that, that has done that recently. I, we're going to throw in some examples and some case studies at the end, but this is one artist. The images are not good here. but. Um, but here they have a combination of their own playlists. They're featured on the one RPM playlist that they also promoted. This is a, a pretty big artist out of Mexico, and they're on the editorially curated playlist. And that way, they get this kind of the best of all worlds. Social media integration. So, um, it, you know, another obvious one, but but it's what you're doing with that with that um, with the potential. How are you you know maximizing your potential on socials? Well, what we do is. When we were working with a new release, we'll uh, we'll talk to Spotify and be like, "What kind of social support can you provide for this content?" You know, uh, and we negotiate that with them. Uh, often, it's a collaboration where the artist is promoting the playlist that they just got featured on Spotify, and Spotify in return is not only featuring them on their editorial or creators playlist, but they're also promoting them on their socials. Uh, so you want to try to connect all the dots. Uh, versus, you know, using your, you know, your labels promoting you, you're promoting yourself, maybe you got other people that are promoting you, but like-minded artists, maybe, maybe there's a network of people that you can count on to promote your stuff, but uh, don't just do the basics. Go beyond what is the obvious on social media. Uh, email marketing, true and tried, right? Um, but, uh, you know, you can't just stop doing it, but I think it's really important. Uh, we do this on a weekly basis. We'll choose a few artists that want to give away a track for a 24-hour period in exchange for a free, uh, in exchange for an email address, and that ge generates a ton of traffic. And then they've got a newsletter. Uh, you know, they got more people they can reach out to. We can segment it by territory or by city, um, and uh, and they get that access to to more fans. And it's something that you know it seems like it's an, it's an old strategy, but it still works. So why not do it, right? A free download sounds really antiquated, but I think it's a really great strategy. As long as you're getting something in return, like. Uh, smart URLs. Um, what we, we like to we have a partner that um, generates our smart URLs for us. They, it's a smart URL connected with the player. Um, it works really really well, but it's key to understanding um, where your traffic is coming from and where it's going. And uh, you know if you're promoting a smart URL with uh, a player like this one on the right, which the person can your fan can choose a platform that they're listening to you know that they want to listen to the music on. You can uh, better target 
how you, or better optimize your marketing campaign. Um, and so this is a great way to connect the dots, so to speak. So to say, so to speak. Um, all right, network cross-promotion. This is something that um, 1RPM is, is really heavily vested in. Um, and the idea is quite simple. Uh, if you have, let's say, one hip hop artist, hip hop artist A, and hip hop artist B, and they have a similar fan base, if you cross pollinate the two, you grow your audiences, right? So now imagine if you have 100 hip hop artists or 1,000 hip hop artists that you work with, um, then you can actually exponentially, in theory, exponentially increase uh, their fan base. And it's something that we, as a, as a, as a you know, relatively large distributor today, um, we can mine our data and mine our audiences and start to cross-promote uh, artists with similar fan bases. Um, and I think uh, this, is, this is an interesting concept that we're going to delve into. We're going to start really with YouTube. Um, and it's frankly uh, YouTube that taught us this idea about cross-promotion audiences. So uh, those of you who don't understand or know, uh, don't don't understand the history of, our, of, of 1 RPM, we started in Latin America. Um, I had the idea of the company in 2007. By the time I had the technology, it was 2010. We were a little bit late to the game for the US market, so I said, let's, let's, go, let's go launch it in Brazil. Uh, and when we launched in Brazil in 2010, I mean, there was nothing. There was no iTunes, there was no, uh, there was nothing other than ring, you know, ring back tones on the mobile carriers um, and YouTube. So YouTube was just the only game in town, and we had to figure out how to make money on YouTube uh, and it was, it was a good way, it was good for us that we didn't have iTunes in a way down there because we had to focus on uh, how do you make money without selling music, right? Which is the business that we're in today. Um, and, and what YouTube has done, uh, they've, they've developed really good tools and, you know, on how to cross promote or how to promote your content within the platform. They give you access to a ton of stuff. Most people don't use it. Um, unfortunately, but it's actually, once you start using it, you can get great benefits from the platform. Um, uh, I'm not talking about whether monetization is not, it's separate from whether their, you know, their monetization is good, that's a whole other debate, but, but in terms of their cross-marketing tools, their marketing tools that they're giving you, they're quite effective. And so what we developed is a business called the Multi-Channel Network on YouTube, where you manage channels uh, in, within a certain, within our hub, and you're essentially using the audiences of each channel to cross-promote your content. So if you have um, uh, like, let's say 50 channels from hip hop and another 40 channels from country, you can start to create these clusters of channels and pl you can create playlists which you share on all of those channels. I mean, there's tons of stuff you can do um, and I'll go through some of those in, in, a, in a minute. But, um, but, but the main thing that you wanna do just to get the basics right, just like you're verifying your profiles on, on socials and on Spotify, you want to just optimize your channel. You want to organize it in a way that enables you to have audience growth. And this whole concept of audience growth came from YouTube. So you know, you're looking at not only how many plays you're getting, but you're looking at, you know, am I growing my audiences over time? Again, that's our key metric today because content, whether it's a single or an album or a video, sometimes you'll have something that just blows up and sometimes you'll have a flop, but in general, uh, you want to look at your audience numbers. If your audience numbers are growing month by month, then you're doing something right. Uh, if you're a one-hit wonder, great, but uh, what are you going to do next? If the, ne if the next 10 songs after that flop and then your audience just crashes, then you're doing something wrong. So we're more interested as a company in, in your audience growth numbers um, because that's, that's what's going to be sustainable for the future. That's how you're going to make money. If you have the right audiences, um, then even if you don't have the best track every time or the best video every time, you're going to grow your business. So, um, so this is just a couple things. I don't think you can read it. Um, it's quite pixelated. But what we're saying is just you know put the right cover art, um, organize your channel in a way that makes it easy to navigate. Um, because you can have a YouTube channel and do nothing and just have one video and it's just not going to do you any good. YouTube looks at this, your algorithm looks at it, and and then if you've done it right, you will start to get, uh, you'll, start, you'll start to get bumped or, or promoted via recommended videos or whatnot. Uh, there are lots of things you can do, tagging, um, thumbnails, all these things help, um, and that's what we call optimization. Uh, here are a couple of examples of cross-promotion campaigns uh, that we do that work really well. Um, one of them is called in-video in featured content. So we can program uh, uh, in an automated fashion, uh, we can choose a video that will appear in every channel that we select, in every video of every channel that we select. 
somewhere in this, um, so I'll show you right here if we can plug this in. You'll get a pop-up in here, and that's something that we program in. It's not YouTube, but it's something that we'll do. And if we have 100 channels that are in country and we'll have a country video, for the most part, we'll probably, you know, drive traffic to that video using all these other channels and all their videos in that channel. And that generates, it depending on how well you implement the campaign, it could be a little 5% of total views, or it could be up to 30, 35, 40%. Uh, so it has dramatic impact. And this is called, this is the end screen. So at the end of the video, your video, not just your, in your own channel, but in other people's channels, depending on how we program it, your video will appear at the end. Uh, and that's really good for mo people who look at um, videos on their mobile phone. It's more effective than this, because this just pops up here, but this is at the end of the video, so it's not interrupting your user experience, um, and it, you generate a lot of conversions in this campaign. Now, here, this is a manual, This is we have to do this manually, because it takes a whole day to set up a campaign, whereas this, you can do it in a couple minutes. Um, but, but we're figuring out how to do this in an automated way. But these are really effective tools um, to, um, to po cross pollinate your audience with you know your content with, with similar audiences. Um, the other concept of the network is not just the virtual network, but your physical network. Uh, well, and, and and how they come together. I mean, we when we promote our content, we're not doing it just for the U.S. We're looking at, um, or we're not just doing it just for Brazil, depending on where our artist is from, or Mexico. We we're looking at. Um, where can this artist have potential globally? What are the potential markets for this artist? And then we're pitching that artist to get it featured uh, in his or her potential relevant markets. Uh, and because we have the data uh, of where their listeners are, we can go to a Spotify or an Apple and say, look, th they have a good fan base here. I think we should, we should promote them. Uh, you should, you know, they deserve to get featured. Um, and we've had great success in leveraging our marketing in different offices in different parts of the world to even take a small, you know, or up and coming uh, artist and get them featured globally. So this is, this is an example of an artist in Nashville, his name is Boo Ray, who got featured in the US, Mexico, all across Latin America, Brazil and Portugal, on Spotify, uh, Deezer, and Apple. Those are the main platforms that he got featured on. So um, obviously when you're working with a company that has the ability to promote your content globally, you're growing your audiences, it's kind of a no-brainer. Collaborations, we've all been there, we've all done them. Um, very, very, you know, whether it's a feature, a guest artist on your album, on your track, uh, or you're taking a channel on YouTube, two channels on YouTube and, and doing a co-production together, those are great ways to, you know, grow your audiences and cross-pollinate. Um, lastly, I think this is lastly, um, advertising. Uh, it's very important that you guys are using your advertising tools, whether it's on socials or with this within the platform. So the platforms themselves, like like Spotify, you can actually have some pretty good, um, Spotify and YouTube uh, have some pretty good advertising options. Uh, Spotify, you can, you, can, you can buy a homepage takeover, um, which, is, which is this. Um, the, and it, you know, they price it per territory that you wanna do it in. Um, you can also negotiate it for free, but sometimes you just have to pay for it. And it's expensive. You know, it's it's your album appearing on on their homepage for at least a day. Uh, rates range from seven thousand to twenty thousand dollars, depending on the market. I mean, I, I could be wrong in the twenty thousand dollar, but as I know seven thousand dollars is about right for some markets. Um, you can also do um, uh, radio ads. You know, like thirty second radio ads, where the artist is presenting their their new track. Um, that's effective. Uh, I think they have a long ways to go still on targeting their ads, but it, they're they're getting they're getting there. YouTube has, I mean, it's Google Ads, so whatever you, you know, you can, you can run ads on Google and, it, and on YouTube and they work really well. Um, but I think advertising is, uh, is well worth considering when you're trying to grow your business and having uh, an ad spend per month per artist, I think is important um, and, and we, we, uh, we recommend it. Uh, obviously social media advertising, we, we've, we've actually done really well promoting our playlists on Facebook. Uh, we'll spend maybe 20, 20, 30 bucks a week per playlist and it generates two to 300 new followers a week on our playlist. So over time that adds up and we're, you know, again, reducing our dependency on editorially curated playlists. So I highly recommend uh, uh, having a small ad budget for some of your own playlists uh, as well um, through socials or through, you know, other uh, options. Uh, we haven't really done a lot of 
Uh, we haven't tried Google Ads for playlists. I just don't think that's the right, um, that's the right uh, platform for that. But Facebook does really well to promote content and to, pro you know, um, for like cool playlists, it works really well. Okay, and, and I wanted to give you kind of a sense of why we, we were confident that all these different tactics that uh, w we're discussing today work, um, because we've seen it ourselves. I mean, we, you know, two years ago, we, we saw streaming was, was absolutely going to, to take over. We, we knew that uh, we couldn't focus on units sold. Uh, I, we still don't focus on units streamed. We're all, it's all about audience growth. And, 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 but if you focus on audience growth, the numbers come, right? So um, here are just some of our numbers as an as a up and coming you know, uh, music company. Uh, in November 2015, we had 30 million subscribers across our YouTube network. So that's just an aggregate. Um, that is the sum of all the subscribers on our channels that we manage. Today we have now 200 million subscribers to our YouTube network. Uh, back in November 2015, we had a billion plays a month, uh, and now we're at four billion plays a month. So uh, the subscribers grew faster than the plays, but I think that it, it's, it's this approach of growing your subscribers is, is so important um, that the plays come with it. Streams, I mean, of course, this, this, this number here of 1,200%, is outrageous, but it's true. I mean, we started off at a very slow base, so uh, I mean, a very small number, 60 million plays a month, and now we're about 800 million plays a month across these four different platforms. Um, but again, the concept of, but, but this has outpaced the, the industry growth. Um, granted, we started off at a, sw a smaller number, so you know that's gonna be skewed in our favor, but it still shows that the approach works. And, and, and it, it works also on, uh, for our own socials, and these numbers are not visible, unfortunately. Um, and also for our playlist growth. Our playlist growth has been really tremendous, especially in the last six months. Um, so I wanted to show a couple case studies, but in the, mean, in, in the meantime, does anybody have any questions or does anybody want to add anything that I, perhaps I, I may have missed in some of our tactics that we, we've talked about? No? no? Okay, great. Uh, so this is an example of uh, kind of connecting all the dots uh, or most of the dots. Um, so this is, a, this is a, a channel, a Brazilian channel actually, uh, that focuses on producing music videos for uh, for the funk genre, which is kind of this urban musical genre. It has nothing to do with funk from the U.S. Um, when he joined our network, this channel was already pretty large. He was doing 30 million plays a month on his own. But he had been doing 30 million plays a month on his own for the last two years. He hadn't really grown. Um, when he j and he when he joined us, like shortly after he joined us. He started to grow, and I'm gonna jump around here. Um, and you can see here that when he joined us, his views and subscribers were about right here. And he's then he's had exponential growth. So he's now at about 750 million plays a month since July of 2015. He joined us in July of 2015. So almost two years later, he's now at 750 million plays a month. He, he had about 1.4 million subscribers on his channel at that time, and now he has over 14 million. Uh, and, and there's a couple reasons for that. Obviously, it wasn't just all us, but he, we were very strong in this genre. So once he joined, uh, we were able to generate so much traffic for him on his channel via all our other channels in that particular genre, because we're so strong on that. I think we control <coughs> in that market, about 80% of the market for that particular genre, that's our market share, um, that he had an instant benefit.